Yes. Okay, this presentation is going to be on the margin perfect matrix. This is a standard tooth with a standard lesion, an infraction lesion that's packing food for her, and she'd like to have this restored and make it look a little better. One of the first things I do when I do a composite is I actually, before I ever start, I take the composite that I expect I'm going to use, I put it on the area of the tooth and see whether or not we like the color. It's an awful lot nicer to, to have the tooth not bonded and find out that you're not happy with the color than finishing the tooth and finding out that you're not happy with the color. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and put a little composite on this tooth and see if we pick the right shade. I'll go ahead and cure that. Good. And I think that's going to be a rather nice looking color. So that's going to be the color we're going to use. Now, the preparation for these teeth is extremely easy. All we really do with it is we go in and we roughen up the dentin. Because sclerotic or etched or abstracted dentin does not bond as well as slightly roughened. And then we create a long bevel on the facial surface. So that's the prep. What we do next is we go ahead and we take the, the, the contour strip, we fold it in half, we take the bent area, and we go back and forth with it. So it creates kind of a little bend like this in the tooth, or in the, uh, the band. We'll then fold these little corners over, and these little corners, once they get folded in, fit around the tooth, but they actually fold in. Then we take a mirror handle or another round instrument, put it in the, the thing, and then pull up so that the bottom part of the band actually tips out like that. Then what we'll do is we'll put this in between the teeth, and like what happens in most cases, the contact is too tight to get the band through. So we'll take a spoon and we'll kind of wedge the teeth apart so that we can put the band in. And then we'll pull it tight. Pulling it down. Now, notice that the band is sticking up. It's not going into the mouth. It's actually sticking more up. We take a spoon and we'll take this, pull it over the outside edge of the, the preparation. And then what happens is we can put this in, and you'll notice how nicely it adapts to the gingival aspect of this tooth. Where it's not adapting to the gingival aspect of the tooth is interproximal. So what we do is we take a little cotton ball. We'll take a little cotton ball and we'll push the cotton ball into the interproximal area. And what that'll do is hold that very tightly interproximally so we don't have any overhangs. We'll, we'll go ahead, make sure that it's down and it's tight. We blow it off and dry it. Making sure it's tight and down. We then take some unfilled resin. At the school, we're going to end up using a standard flowable. I tend to use a clear resin because I want to be able to cure through it. We then put that on. light cure it and you'll notice now we've got a, 
a band that's very tightly adapted and we've got it sitting down against between her gums and her tooth and we can do a very nice job of isolating this area. We do a selective etch and so we're etching the enamel and so I'm using a very thin gel etch with a brush to just go on the enamel, not on the dentin. We leave that on for about 20 seconds. Wash it off. And you'll notice we have a very nice etch pattern on our enamel. Next we'll take, I happen to be using Liner Bond 2. You guys will be using Prelude, but this is the primer. And you'll notice I'm using a brush rather than the micro brush because the brush will get into the area at the bottom of the gingival aspect of the band much better than a micro brush will. The micro brush will tend to be a little bit too fat and will tend to actually break the, the bonding agent away from the tooth, which means that you'll have leakage and then all of the advantages of the band go away. We make sure that we evaporate all of the solvent. And then we go through and add our bonding agent. We blow off the rest, and we're ready to light cure. Okay. One of the things that's real important is I take a little flowable resin, put the flowable resin just a drop under the uh, at, in the prep, and then we'll take our composite, and I'll actually show you at the school a nice little trick with the little campules but we put this in and you'll notice as I'm pushing this in all of the flowable resin is now flowing up to the top of the tooth. I'm sure there's some flowable resin still down at the bottom but it's filling in any little idiosyncrasies so that we do not get any voids. When I put this in we just kind of take my little cord packer and we flatten it against the facial aspect of the tooth okay and then we cure it now that we've reached an initial cure I can actually take the matrix off and I use an explorer or if it seems to be more stuck in I'll use what's called an amalgam knife but a spoon or any other instrument will work and this just comes off very nicely. Now before we finish it I want to cure the gingival aspect because it didn't cure as well because it was being covered and this is especially important if you're using a colored flowable resin. Take the band off. And what we end up with is this kind of a restoration. Now, obviously, there's a point here that needs to be trimmed up. But the big advantage of this is that when you look at the gingival aspect of this tooth, how beautifully smooth this is down here and how it looks like the height of contour. We were just able to move the height of contour down to the tooth. Now, I'm going to polish this up. I use a needle tip finishing burr.
Now you'll notice the nice thing is, is I don't have to touch the gingival aspect. I'm up above the gum tissue where it's easy to reach, easy to see, and easy to contour. <laughs> and then we go in with a polishing touch to turn up the top part of the tooth. <laughs> and then I'll use a polishing point to get in a proximal. There's the final restoration. Coming into focus. You know, we are going to uh, come in and floss the contact, but you'll notice there's absolutely no overhang there, no overhang there, and a very nice end result. Now, I realize that putting the band on takes time and effort, but you more than save that in finishing and in actual result. Now when you look straight on to the tooth, you see how nice that tooth looks as the gingival aspect of it? Yep. Very nice. Okay, so thank you very much. <laughs>